All right, Bronny is currently projected to go 54th overall to the Celtics in ESPN's latest mock draft. Wendy, what's your reaction to what LeBron had to say? Well, first off, let me just say that LeBron really, really did want to make the All-Star game his rookie year, and he was kind of pissed off he didn't make it. And I do think that that was one of the reasons why he didn't do the slam dunk contest that year, because he was annoyed that the NBA didn't have him on the All-Star team. But that's an aside. Um, I don't trust my eyes when it comes to, to evaluating 19-year-olds, Molly. So what I do is I ask scouts, and here's what they tell me about Bronny. First off, he was very impressive with the teams in individual meetings. The, 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 the teams don't know him very well because he was kept really out of the public eye, didn't really talk publicly at all. And so they were trying to guess based on what they heard from other people and what he did on social media. He performed very well in those meetings. There are a couple of different ways scouts look at him. Some scouts tell me, look, he is six foot one, and regardless of what the name is on his back of his jersey, to make it in the NBA at six foot one, you have to do several things that are very elite, whether it's elite defensively, whether it's incredible shooting, whether it's incredibly efficient point guard play. And right now, that Bronny doesn't do any of those things, and it's going to be hard for him. But then I have other scouts who tell me, look, he is 19 years old. He was unable to train for his only college season because of his heart uh, situation that he had. He was completely out of position at USC, that he shouldn't have gone there, that um, you know there was too many guards, and that he played out on the wing when he should have been more uh, as a, on the ball, and that they don't think that that season is a fair evaluation of him and that they see improvements in his body and they appreciate his work ethic and they say, let's let him go to the G League and let's see how he does in another year, year or two. And so as I gather all of that together, what I think, Molly, is he will get drafted. He will get drafted probably in the second round because of his last name, yes, and because that there are that, that the team's going to say, this is a good guy to have around. He's not going to be pretentious. He's not going to expect things. They've been very impressed with him. And it's also possible he might get drafted because the team is making a strategy move, whether they're trying to get LeBron's attention, they're trying to do something else. All of those things are possible. I think Bronny is performing well. I think the standard cannot be LeBron James Jr., that the standard has to be Bronny. And I think that's what LeBron and Bronny themselves himself has said. Props to LeBron James and Savannah James for raising such a wonderful son, for being such great parents, because everybody that you talk to about Bronny, one of the first things they bring up is his character. The fact that he's a really, really good kid, he's hardworking, he's dedicated, he's focused, et cetera, et cetera. And major, major props to them as parents for raising him the way that they have, because he does seem to be a really, really good kid. I know that I'm rooting for him. I know that I want him to make it to the NBA. I know that I want him to have a successful career there. I'm certainly not rooting against him. But we're not going to gloss over the kind of predicament he's been placed in. It's one thing to be the son of LeBron James. There's pressure that comes with that. We understand that. Particularly in this day and age, Wendy and Legs, we know how cruel society can be to every and anybody for crying out loud because everybody got a voice and everybody got something to say. We understand that, the advent of social media, YouTube, and beyond. We get that. But we can't ignore what role LeBron has played in bringing even more of a microscope on his son when LeBron said, A, he wants to play in the NBA with his son, B, he was willing to play for a team uh, and go anywhere that his son was going, and C, how he alluded to Bronny being better than some NBA players. And you couldn't find, if you found one legs, if you found one Wendy, let me know. But I haven't heard one single NBA evaluator that ever co-signed on such a statement that LeBron James has made. Now we got to take into account, we have to take into account what LeBron James is doing because he's a mastermind. Let's just call it what it is. Wendy, you know this. I watched you on Get Up this morning, Wendy, and I wanted you on the air, and I want to look you in the face when I was saying what I'm about to say. I completely agree with you when you say that LeBron James, quote, unquote, doesn't want to be seen as having anything to do with the hiring of a coach. He damn sure got something to do with the firing of coaches. So what is it? Now, we can sit up there and parse words. We could parse narratives and all of this other stuff. But the reality of the situation is that when you're LeBron James, 
when you're that great and you're that impactful with that level of cachet, when you play for an owner in Jeannie Buss who looked me in my face and told me personally going into last season, her number one priority was making sure that LeBron James is happy. Number one. That's what she said because she knows what he means to the franchise and she knows what he means to the game of basketball. You got to take all of those things into consideration and ask what does that equate to. Last but not least, you also got to take into account this podcast, Mind the Game, by him and J.J. Reddick. Let's make sure we give them their props. Congratulations. It's a damn good podcast. You want to know about basketball? That's a place to go. They both know what the hell they're talking about. But it just so happens. Everybody want to sit up there and say, well, you know what? He don't want to have anything to do with, 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 with who the next coach is. No, no, no. I want I want Greeny, I want uh, Wendy and, and Legs up on the screen right now. Uh, he don't want to have nothing to do with that, huh, Wendy? Well, uh, Rob. Who's the candidate for the Lakers job? Ain't that J.J. Reddick? Ain't that one of the leading candidates for the job? I think so. I, I, I kind of know. I kind of know this. He's one of the leading candidates for the job. LeBron James and J.J. Reddick didn't start this podcast last week. Now, I ain't pointing the finger at J.J. at all because J.J. just doing his thing. I'm talking about LeBron. How are you playing for the Lakers knowing Darvin Ham's on a hot seat? And you're going to start this podcast with a dude that's now a leading candidate for the head coach's job. I mean, I understand that factually speaking, finitely, we can't definitively say blah, blah, blah. But damn, can I say one plus one equals two? Can I say two plus two equals four? 